You guys got me to 200 subscribers, which means that we get to talk about another Mario RPG on this channel. And that Mario RPG is Paper Jam. Everybody loves Paper Jam, right? It's everyone's favorite Mario RPG of all time. Let's not fact check that. But do you guys remember my first ever video on my channel? If you don't, then I'm actually jealous because that video is... It's my first YouTube video, so we'll just say that. But it's talking about the areas in Partners in Time and actually ranked them. So we might as well just do that with Paper Jam. And it's not going to be as hard to do it because there's only eight areas in this game. And stuff like Inside Doop Doop Dunes or the dungeon in Twinsy Tropics, that'll just be Twinsy Tropics or Doop Doop Dunes. But other than that, I don't have any rules. Obviously, it's my opinion. There's going to be spoilers. But other than that, let's get started. <laughs> I hate Twinsy Tropics. You actually go here twice, and the first time you're not even trying to actually get to the destination. You're just trying to flee the place. And that actually shows that Mario, Luigi, and Paper Mario had the exact same opinion as me. They both want to get the heck out of there. And that's how I want to feel. But here's the thing about this place. I'm going to ask you one question, and it will show why I have this at number 8. Hey guys. What do you do at Twinsy Tropics? You probably have three responses to this question, and the first one is that you just don't have a response because this place is unmemorable and you don't actually do anything here. The second response is that you actually put the Bowser coin in. Well, I don't actually personally count that to Twinsy Tropics, I actually count that more towards Bowser's Castle. And the third response will probably be, hey, you actually left here with the ship. Which, I mean, I guess so, but I more count that with the plains area. So because of this, there's nothing here. There's basically nothing that you do. So what else is there? I mean, there's the Toad missions. They're boring, and they're actually one of my least favorite missions in any area. And we also got the Hammer Bros taking your blocks. I thought that was very boring, and I didn't really think that there was really any intrigue with it. You got the Fire Bros taking the medallion. That was interesting, right? No, you really only had to fight like three Fire Bros, and then you knew exactly where the coin was. Yeah, there's just nothing interesting about this place. I guess some of the platforming at the last segment where you're actually trying to get to Bowser's Castle is kind of good because I just like the drill in this game. But in general, I just hate this place. There's nothing really that enjoyable about this place and that's why I hate it. I hate Doop Doop Dunes. Okay, that's such a stupid name. But Doop Doop Dunes sucks a tiny bit less than Twinsy Tropics, but I still hate this place. Unlike Twinsy Tropics, though, this place just has a couple massive problems, where Twinsy Tropics just has a lot of tiny negatives. But the massive problems are huge. First off, the bros items. I will always say that attack pieces is probably the best way to give bros items. And yeah, Nabbit is just not successful here. The first time that you actually see Nabbit in Doop Doop Dunes, it's fine. You are actually forced to do the Nabbit quest. I like that. But the Drop Chopper and the Cannonball Chuck, that is optional. One of them's locked behind a side quest, and the other one you just have to get lucky to actually find Nabbit. That's not fun, and it's very annoying. And actually before the fight with all the football players, I don't know their names, I'm sorry. But before that fight, I actually didn't have the Cannonball Chuck because I didn't know that you had to go to the village to actually get it. It was locked behind a side quest, which is just annoying. My second problem is actually a problem that's shown in a lot of other areas. This place is so open, which may sound like a good thing, but the problem is that there's no substance inside the openness, except for just some item blocks, some dash flowers, and some platforming. That's it. It makes this place very slow paced, underwhelming, and unmemorable. And did I mention that this place is boring? There's nothing to it, I just remember this place as a desert. It doesn't even separate itself from New Super Mario Bros. games. Now that I think of it, I actually think that the New Super Mario Bros. U Desert is more unique than this desert in a Mario and Luigi game. Even though I don't like Gritty Desert, I will say that it's pretty unique with Koopaseum. And I will say that Teehee Valley, I do like the place, and it is kind of unique where you actually have to escort Princess Peach. What does this place offer? What in the world does this place actually offer that's unique or interesting? Nothing. It just doesn't offer anything. Number 6 is the 50 second generic planes area from a Mario game. Oh my god, I basically have the exact same opinion with Doop Doop Dunes as I have with Sunbeam Planes. Just because it's boring, it's very open, there's no substance in it. 
but replace my opinion with the bros items with doo doo dunes instead there's tutorials here now uh, for some reason I don't dislike the tutorials as much as the bros items, so that's probably why, that was probably like the tiebreaker. I still think that this place sucks, I think it's awful, it's just a gateway area from Princess Peach's castle to be like gloomy woods or doo doo dunes, and that's really all this place is, it's nothing, there's nothing in it that's interesting, just like doo doo dunes. And because of that, it deserves to be number six. It's not as bad as the last two, but it's still a really bad place, that's way too open. Peach's Castle is a place where you do a mini game, you have some dialogue, and you see the castle get destroyed. And it's above three places that you go to at least two times throughout the game. Yeah, it really shows how bad these places are in Paper Jam, but I mean, Princess Peach's Castle actually has some positives that are pretty notable. First off, I actually like how depressed all the toads are when all the castle is destroyed. It has a good atmosphere. The only problem that actually ruins it is that the music is still the exact same. I think it should have been something like Holly Jolly Village, where normally it'd just be like Happy Jingle Bells, but here it's just Happy Jingle Bells the whole time, which it just doesn't make sense to me. And, I mean, there's nothing really bad about the place. There's nothing that's really annoying. It's just Peach's Castle. There's nothing really to it. So I guess that probably puts it at number 5. I mean, it's not bad, it's just there. I barely even counted this as a place, but I guess it was worth it because it shows how bad 3 of the 8 areas actually are in this game. Bowser's Castle feels like the definition of solid to me. I don't think it's a bad place, I don't think it's a great place, I think it's just good. Everything just equates to it being good, I think the enemies are good, I think that the plane is a great ability, but it's weird that you learn it here, so that basically equates to it being good. I mean, the music is great, but I think the layout's a bit weird, so that basically equates to it being good. There's just not much to this place. I will say that the mini games and it being very generic definitely sinks it a bit from being a bit higher, but in general, this place is fine. I do think that the mini games are definitely the biggest problem, though, especially because the game basically acknowledges that it's pointless to do these mini games because after you fail enough, they just let you skip it. And obviously, that's what I did. I just got myself caught immediately, and then bam, I just skipped the mini game because it's just boring. It's not really that fun. I don't think it's that needed. So because of this, I think that the mini games are not great. I also think that it's very generic for a Bowser place, but that's not actually too much of a problem for me because at least Bowser's Castle, just in general, is a bit more unique than just a plains area or a desert. So I don't think it's awful in that regard, but I will say that it's definitely a memorable for a Bowser's Castle. I definitely think it's more memorable than platformer games, but I do think that this place is definitely more memorable than Mario RPG Castles. So because of that, I feel like it only falls at number 4. Neo Bowser Castle basically has three things that are core to its place, and it's why any area with these three core things, it will be great. One, the enemies are really good. Two, the platforming segments are really good. And three, Nabbit is shown to you. Nabbit is actually shown to you so you can easily get the bros items for this place, which is so nice. I love that so much, thank you producers. And I think that because of these three things, I think it deserves to be at number two. But wait a minute, we're at the third segment, why am I saying it deserves to be at number two? Well, you guys may know that Dream Team also had Neo Bowser Castle, and I think that that Neo Bowser Castle is definitely better than this one, so it kept getting compared in my head, so because of that, I think it had to drop in my opinion just because of that reason alone. I think it, if it literally had a name change, which is gonna make me sound so stupid, if I have a name change, then perfect. I would have been completely fine with this area being at number two. But because it's literally the exact same name as Neo Bowser Castle from Dream Team, I mean, it has to be at number three. It just gets compared in my head way too many times. Gloomy Woods is just amazing. I vividly remember when I was replaying this game for my channel, I had so much fun. This was the first time I had so much fun playing Paper Jam. And I still don't know why, 
but I think it's just because of the music and the atmosphere. For both times, even though the first time it's just a forest, the second time it's definitely a weird atmosphere because it's just so much more foggy. I do think that the second time is definitely more memorable than the first time, but I still like the first time because of you fighting Kamek, technically, and using Wiggler to actually break through Kamek's, I guess, cardboard magic? I don't know what they are. But in general, it's very fun and I really like it. There's a lot of platforming to get all the fruits, which is really fun. And I will say that this place is definitely more barren, but I really like the enemies and I really like the platforming here. Just like I said for Neo Bowser Castle. A place can be barren, but if there's really good platforming and really good enemies, I will like this place. And that's what happened here. And obviously there's the music as well. I mean, probably my favorite part about this place is when you're alone with Luigi, which is definitely controversial. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I love it a lot because most of the time you're not alone with one character, unless you count Paper Mario when you have to go into slits. But in general, this place is so fun with Luigi and when he's scared. Again, I can definitely see why, but I just like the platforming a lot. But once you get Mario back, it just gets back to normal. But in general, there's one reason why. Only one reason why this place isn't at number one. And it's because of the bros item that's locked behind a side quest in this place. It's very annoying when bros items are locked behind side quests. And it's here as well, just like it was for Doop Doop Dunes. And it's very irritating. So because of that, I can't put it at number one, even though I love this place so much. Mount Burr has no problems in my opinion. I think that this is probably the perfect place in Paper Jam. Not only do you learn an amazing ability that's so fun to use, it makes platforming so much more fun and so much more creative, there's also great enemies that are not only difficult, but have really cool attacks. I mean, again, those are the two things you need to make a successful area, and it has that, but it also has amazing music. It's not as good as Gloomy Woods, but I think that Mount Burr has a very good theme that's very majestic for a mountain. I really like it and it very much fits. I also like the village here. I like the snowman. I just like snow levels in general. So this is a really fun place. And I really want to go back to the platform because of the drill that you learn. The drill is just it's so good. I love the drill, and it's probably my favorite drill in any Mario and Luigi game, because it makes you climb walls. There's dirt on the side of walls, and you just shoot yourself across the mountain, and it's so fun, and it's so creative. That's probably my favorite part of Mount Burr, and it makes this place so much more fun. Thank you guys for watching this video. My next video will probably be on Paper Jam, and if you're not subscribed yet and you lasted this long, you might as well subscribe. I mean, I'm a small channel, so it always helps. And I mean, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.